Hello, my name is Jonathan Milhoff, and I'm from Hametown Christian Academy. And today I will be presenting a message titled Protection. Our context will be in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse, we're starting in verse 1. But before we get to that, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for letting me do this, Lord. And I pray that you would just help this to reach people, Lord, and that they would come to know you, Father, and touch their hearts, Lord. In your name, amen. So, have you ever, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a fear so bad that it, like, paralyzed you and you couldn't do anything about it? And did you have protection in that? Well, I had a fear like that. My mom was in a car accident in January. And then she broke her right humerus bone. But she was okay. She was protected by the airbags. So, who's your airbag? And who are you letting protecting your life? So in 2 Samuel chapter 21, starting in verse 1, Then there was famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not children of Israel, but of a raiment of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul sought to slay them in his zeal to the children of Israel and Judah. Wherefore, David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make an atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver, nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. So right as we get into this, in verse 1, we said that there's famine in the days of David for three years, year after year after year. And finally, after three years of this, David inquired of the Lord, and he goes, God, what's going on? Why is there famine? And God plainly answers him, It's for Saul and for his house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Now, a crucial point in this is that you never, ever, ever will see this again. You will never say, see it say that it, Saul slayed the Gibeonites. This is the only time it recorded it. So God must have thought it was important to bring it up. And then in verse 2, they're call he's calling the Gibeonites together. And another big point. They were not children of Israel. They were Amorites. So why is God avenging them for this? It was because the children of Israel had sworn unto them. Back in Joshua, they came, the Gibeonites came to him and they said, Don't slay us. Make a covenant with us not to slay us. And they did. But they did it in a special way. They said, God... We're making this covenant, and we want you. They brought God into it, and so now God's keeping it. And then, in verse 3, David says unto them, he asks them what they want. What can I do for you that you will bless this? And this is kind of funny. They tell him what they don't want first, and then they tell him what they want. So in verse 4, they say that they don't want any silver. They don't want any gold. They don't want anything of his house. And they don't want anybody in Israel to die for this. So what do they want? And then we start in verse 5. And they answered the king, the man that consumed us, and that devised against us, that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel. Let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. So in verse 5, they're kind of saying, well, this is what he was like. You know, this is what he did. He, consumed, he wanted to consume us with all of his might. And then in verse 6, this is what they want. Seven men, seven relatives of Saul, are going to die for this. They're going to be hung in Gibeah unto God to show this is, this is it, God. This is their atonement. But someone's not going to be hanged. And he's a very special person. In verse 7. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So Mephibosheth, the guy that is lame, he can't walk anymore. He, whenever David was taking over the kingdom, there's a story about this in 1 Samuel, whenever David was taking over the kingdom, not really taking over, but his maid, 
was running with Mephibosheth, and she f- fell and broke, and he broke his legs, and he could never walk again. So they look for him. They look for Mephibosheth for a long time. They finally found him, and Mephibosheth thought he was going to die. But he gets to sit at the king's table and have personal protection from the king. And that oath between David and Jonathan, that happened when Jonathan was going into battle. He asked David, he said, Please, if I die, take care of my relatives and my sons and anybody else. So he did. And now you're probably wondering, how does this relate to us? How, what does this have to do with us? Think of it this way, we're Mephibosheth, the world is the Gibeonites, and David is God. God will protect you, because the Mephib- I bet you that the Gibeonites wanted Mephibosheth. They're like, he's the direct descendant, he needs to die for this. But God, that's how the world is. They're like, you're going to die for this, or just die, they want to kill you. But God steps in and he says, no. You can't have him. You're not allowed to have him. So let me just end with this. Who's protecting your life? And who are you letting be the airbag in your life? Thank you.